So let's see, we have uh, Mongo uh, up and running here listening to port 27017 uh, and here uh, we are going to start uh, Mongo. All right, and it looks like it's uh, connected to 27017, uh, very good. And let's uh, see if we have any databases here. Okay, we don't have any databases, so we have some, some default uh, toy databases in there, admin and local. And Yes? I'm sorry? Uh, so if you know if your if your database uh, you know you know the, the structure of your data very well uh, and and it's very unlikely to change over time uh, and you have lots and lots of relationships uh, in, your, in your data model uh, you, you probably should want to stick to uh, relational databases uh, as opposed to you know if your data is perhaps a little bit unstructured uh, that uh, might change over time uh, that might be perhaps geographically distributed. Uh, across multiple regions, right? Uh, that um, uh, that you might, uh, uh, you, you might want to consider uh, non relational databases, right? Where you know, the schema might change over time, and, and you might have to adapt it uh, as you go. Um, and uh, and and also, if you, you don't, if you're not doing lots of joins, where you're uh, have a data model that's very uh, denormal, uh, normalized, right? And uh, uh, if it's if it's very normalized and, and you Certainly want to break it up. Uh, you probably want to stick to uh, relational databases. Right? That, that you're going to uh, have to join it you know, to rebuild the entire data structure. Uh, but if you uh, if, if it, you know the structure of what you store as an object, um, that that you just want to return uh, an object that already instantiated, that already have all the fields uh, pre-populated, uh, that that you don't want to have to go fetch uh, any, any more queries, uh, then perhaps you know non-relational databases. Uh, also, you know the, the, the performance for for huge amounts of data, uh, you know, non-relational databases uh, seem to perform uh, much better. Um, again, you know, they were taking away a lot of the burden that uh, relational data, databases have. You know, all the validation, uh, all the uh, constraints, uh, a lot of that is is being moved over to the application layer. Right, so none of that is is uh, uh, falls under responsibility of, of, the, of, the, of the database, right? as opposed to uh, relational database still you know, enforcing all sorts of rules and validation uh, on your data. Right? Um, also, uh, you know, non-transactional data. Uh, so transactional meaning uh, where you're going to be updating uh, lots of data, right? that uh, you want to go back to the data, uh, change it right? and over time. So it changes the state of the record. Uh, Perhaps you know a relational database might be better for that, uh, but there are many databases where uh, you never actually modify the uh, the data. You just create a brand new record uh, where those where the where the new instance is the current state of the uh, of that data model, and the other one is just for audit purposes, where you, you leave a trail of all the states that you've been at, right? But you don't use them anymore. Uh, it's just an audit, and uh, the very last record is the last one. So. Those kinds of places, also where you have like a streaming of data that you're generating and inserting data, um, and you want to keep a long trail uh, of the non-relational data that seems to actually perform a little better. Um, um, okay, so uh, show DBs. Let's uh, create a, a database for our purposes. Uh, so let's. Um, uh, did, did we create? Did we say uh, a particular? Did we create a particular uh, database here? What do I call it? Oh, whiteboard. All right, so let's do that. So use uh, whiteboard. Uh, if I show DBs now, uh, it doesn't show anything until I start actually inserting anything in there, right? But I am currently um, uh, using whiteboard, so any inserts I make will go into that particular uh, uh, database. So let's uh, let's do some inserts. So we'll, we'll say db.insert, uh, actually no, the, the collection, so users.insert, and we might uh, create here a username, Ada, uh, you know, uh, first name, uh, Ada, and last name, 
Lovelace. Again, it gives you a, a status of, of where that it was su successful. If we show DBs now, notice that it does show a whiteboard as listed there. Right? Uh, also, notice that uh, before there were no collections, but if we want to list all the collections, we can, so we can show the collections. And notice that it says users. And uh, I can retrieve data from my users saying db.users.find. Uh, it just returns the, the record that I just created, and I can predefy it. You know, by by using pretty, okay, right. Uh, so let's uh, create a couple more here. So db dot uh, users uh, insert, and um, uh, I can um, uh, uh, say username and say uh, um, tlee and say that the first is Tim. And that the last is Burns Lee. Is that two words? Is it? I forget. Uh, so notice it allowed me to insert it even though I misspell the first, right? As opposed to first or first first name, right? So if I if I retrieve and find, notice that it returns both uh, Ada and and Tim. Uh, but you know it doesn't really care or validate it that the uh, that had any particular structure. Right? I can I can uh, put in anything I, I want. Right? Um, um, I can I can retrieve. Uh, let's see if we if we um, if I have a, a salary, I can I can say maybe uh, db dot um, users dot update. Um, so update. Also allows me to take you know, take a look at uh, any any record that was already there, and manipulate it, and change its its values. Uh, and it takes uh, two arguments. The first argument is very much like the finder, right? Where you say, well, which record do you want to update? Yes. Uh, and then the second argument is, well, what do you want to do with it? Right? What updates do you want to make? Uh, so, for instance, uh, I might um, uh, change Ada. Uh, so I want to say maybe uh, update the uh, the the record. Sorry, document. Uh, whose username is Ada, right? So that's the where clause, which record I'm updating, and then the second one is the I want to change maybe the salary. Actually, let, let me let me change uh, Tim's first. Uh, I want to change the uh, uh, Tim's salary. So no, notice that Tim doesn't have any any salary. So we'll change it to salary, right? And and Tim makes a, just a wimpy ten hundred thousand. Uh, so notice that what's going to happen here, right, is that it's going to find the record whose username is T Lee, right, and it's going to modify the record so that it's the salary is ten, it's a hundred thousand dollars, right. So it says that it found one match and it updated one uh, one documents, right. But if we look at the at the documents, right, it's not exactly what we would have we would have expected, right. Notice that it comes back. Notice that Tim no longer has. The uh, the username it doesn't have the first it doesn't have the last right it completely replaced uh, the 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 document with the document that I gave it right so basically basically just erase the old document and, and replace it with this one which is fine right I just did it wrong right I did it wrong uh, what we, what we really want to be able to do is uh, I'm going to update the user who's that I have who has the salary uh, of of hundred thousand. And really, I want to set the username to T. Lee. What's that going to do? It's just going to do the same thing, right? It's going to replace it, right? Uh, what we really want to be able to do is, is, is do the following. We want, we want to use one of several commands, right? one of several commands uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the database and say, no, 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 I don't want to. I don't want you to replace the document. I want to just set the following fields. Okay, I want to set the following fields. So, oops. Uh, what the? <laughs> now, if I do Control C, it's gonna kick out of me, kick me out of the database. <laughs> um, did it update it? What did it do? <laughs> Find. Okay, it didn't do anything. Great. Uh, let's try it again. So db dot uh, users 
uh, dot update the record whose salary uh, is $100,000. Okay, and I want to set uh, the username uh, to be uh, T Lee. All right, close again. All right, so it did a it did a a match. It modified one. Let's see the what it what it changed. So indeed, now it didn't just replace it. It updated just the uh, the username. Right. So we can do a little a little more. Uh, we can just uh, update instead of the salary something a little more uh, unique, perhaps, and set the first name correctly. So first name. And this is Tim, not time, Tim. And last name, uh, Burns Lee. Okay, if we find again, we have both uh, updated the records as we wanted. Yes? So is camel case kind of a convention for Mongo Yes, it's, a, it's an object, right? It's what you would expect to put a plain old JSON object from okay. there, right? Yes. Um, um, all right. Oh, so notice that when we do a find, it retrieves uh, all of them, right? Um, uh, but you can be more specific. Well, for instance, let's uh, let's add let's add uh, a couple more folks in here. Let's uh, insert. Let's insert um, uh, Bob. So Bob. So this is first name. And last name, uh, Hope, and with a salary, maybe just a little more. Do you want to change the last name? <laughs> yes, I should have. Um, and uh, let's uh, change. Um, um, let's also change uh, update uh, ADAS. So DB users uh, dot update. And where the username is Ada, uh, let's uh, uh, give her. Uh, so it says so set right. We've almost forgot the set set. And um, so salary. She's been around much longer. So find. Oh, uh, there we go. So we have Ada, Tim, and Bob. And then we can play around with certain things of, of being able to retrieve this thing. So you can say, for instance, uh, db.users find. And now we can say uh, where the salary salary is equal to 100,000. So it retrieves just Tim, right? Or uh, 150,000. Oops, no. 150,000. So that's Bob. Uh, or you can start saying that I wanted something that is greater than, right? So, for instance, you know, salary that is greater than or equal to uh, your ninety thousand, right? So you can say maybe a salary. Um, so here you can put a, a a predicate saying that the salary is greater than greater than, right? And then you know ninety thousand, right? So it retrieves pretty. Uh, wait a minute. No. Oh yeah. Well, everyone's making more than ninety thousand. Uh, so let's uh let's uh make it uh, so it's greater than one hundred ten thousand. How's that? One hundred ten thousand. So Tim shouldn't be there, right? So I only get Ada and Bob. Bob Hope. Yes. Right. Um. Uh, you can you can also uh, you know combine. There's there's all sorts of uh, operators. You know, there's greater than, less than, greater than or equal. Not equal, equal. There's a whole bunch of operators that are available. Uh, there's also all sorts of uh, Boolean operators that you can combine with and and ors. Yes. Yes. Uh, so yeah, so there's quite a few uh, operators, uh, and uh, there's also uh, you know being able to remove things from here. So db.users.remove, uh, 
uh, and then you can remove you know, specific uh, elements. Again, the first uh, argument, right? Um, the first argument is is uh, the criteria by which you want to remove. Right? So maybe I want to remove Bob Hope. So username, and then remove Bob, or Bob. So yeah, we remove Bob, and then we do a find. Right, and it returns just Ada and Tim Burns Lee. Okay, so there you have it. So you have uh, the, uh, the the insert, the retrieval, um, the update, and the delete. Right, all the CRUD operations are there. All right, so let's take a look at some more interesting things that you can do, and some of the limitations of what you can do. Right.